Look up at a cold, rust-colored world where an ancient river once spilled into a cratered lake. Now imagine you're standing on that fossil shoreline while a six-wheeled robot noses into layers of time, bottle caps the past, and quietly asks the biggest question we can ask. Did life ever start here? That's the story of NASA's Perseverance rover, how it fell from the Martian sky, learned the ground like a geologist, and began building humanity's first interplanetary rock collection. And the plot just thickened. In a dried river channel called Naretva Vallis, Perseverance drilled a core from a rock nicknamed Chayava Falls. Inside that core, labeled Sapphire Canyon, scientists found textures, minerals, and organics intriguing enough to call potential biosignatures. Not proof of life, but the closest, most serious clue yet. If you like sharp, no-hype space deep dives, tap subscribe now. Perseverance began this journey with seven minutes of terror. On February 18th, 2021, the rover plunged through Mars's thin air, steered itself with terrain relative navigation, and nailed a pinpoint landing inside Yezero Crater, a 30-mile wide basin chosen because an ancient delta might have trapped, layered, and preserved evidence of past microbes. No rover had ever landed with such precision at such a scientifically rich, risky site. The touchdown was a masterclass in guidance, a parachute unfurling at supersonic speed and a rocket pack sky crane lowering the rover to the ground. From that first breath of Martian wind across its microphones, Perseverance had one main job, find the best rocks and save them for the day we can bring them home. From Sol 1, Yezero looked like a detective's dream. The crater floor rocks told a surprising story. Not only sediment laid by water, but also igneous rocks, solidified lava, that later interacted with water, creating a natural clock we can date on Earth. The team named early terrains Mars and Seta, Navajo words reflecting the landscape's character. In those first months, Perseverance learned its tools, abraded patches to peek at fresh rock, zapped targets with Supercam's laser to read chemistry from a distance, and pressed Pixel's X-ray head to map elements grain by grain while Sherlock's deep ultraviolet ramen and fluorescence hunted for organics at sand grain scales. Three instruments, one purpose. Pick the most revealing samples and understand their environment to the finest detail the rover can muster. The first attempt to core a rock crumbled to dust, Mars reminding everyone that easy doesn't survive first contact with reality. Days later, Perseverance lived up to its name. The rover cored a tougher basalt nicknamed Rochette and sealed the first chalk-sized cylinders of Mars within sterile titanium tubes. Every successful core felt like a vault being closed on billions of years. These aren't souvenirs, they're time capsules. While the rover worked, a four-pound helicopter named Ingenuity rewrote the rulebook. It flew once, then again, then 72 times in total, scouting routes, proving powered flight on another world, and changing how we will explore Mars forever. Ingenuity finally retired in January 2024 after a rotor strike, but its legacy is permanent. Aerial scouting works, and future missions will fly because a tiny helicopter dared to. By early 2023, Perseverance made an audacious move. It created the first sample depot on another world. At a place called Three Forks, the rover carefully dropped 10 backup sample tubes in a zigzag pattern across flat ground, spaced for a future lander or fetch vehicle to find them. It was a quiet, historic act. Even if Perseverance never moved another meter, Mars' sample return would still have a shot. Then the rover rolled on with the Prime set still on board. If you're into this mission and want Mars updates that age well, give this video a like. It really helps more space fans find it. As the mission crossed the crater floor and reached the Delta's fan front, the rocks changed character. You can see it from space in the Butte, called Kodiak a stacked book of layers that scream River Delta. Up close, Perseverance found sloping beds, deltaic cliniforms buried beneath the surface, imaged by the rover's ground-penetrating radar, RIMFAX. 
Those buried lines are not just pretty geology, they're the fingerprints of a river system that laid sediments gently, layer over layer, exactly the kind of place where organics might have been trapped and protected. Sampling the fan front and then the upper fan, Perseverance shifted from simply, is there water history here, to the more charged, are there rocks that could preserve signs of life? Pixel found patches rich in carbonates and silica, minerals that, on Earth, are famous for preserving microtextures and chemical signals from ancient life. Sherlaw tightened the net, mapping organic molecules bound up with specific minerals and textures, not life but the kind of association scientists look for when they whisper the phrase biosignature potential. Then came the margin unit, the contact between the crater floor and the delta. Rimfax and the cameras traced a distinct break in subsurface layering, a geological turning of the page. The mission was reading Mars like a core sample, but stretched across kilometers. Each drive wasn't just distance, it was time travel. By mid-2024, the rover did something bold. It left the familiar delta terrain and dropped into an ancient river channel, Naretva Vallis, to chase light-toned rock that glowed in orbital images. The team called the new site Bright Angel. There, Perseverance examined outcrops along both edges of the channel and drilled a core from a partially buried rock the team nicknamed Chayava Falls. Months later came the headline, the Sapphire Canyon core showed a suite of textures, minerals, and organic signals that the authors said warrant consideration as potential biosignatures. Minerals like Vivianite and Gregiti, on Earth often linked to microbial processes, appeared alongside those organics. Scientists were careful, almost stubborn, not to overclaim. Geology has a way of faking biology, but the message was clear. If there's a place on Mars where nature stored a whisper of ancient life, this rock is a prime suspect. What does potential biosignature really mean in plain language? It means multiple clues line up in a way that biology can explain elegantly, but geology might also imitate. You need the rock in an Earth lab, petrographic microscopes, high-resolution mass spectrometers, isotope measurements down to parts per trillion, to call it. That is why Perseverance was built to cache samples. That is why Mars sample return exists as an idea worth the headaches. And that is why the next part of this story matters. How and when those cores get home. Mars sample return has been a moving target. The original architecture stretched budgets and technology to the edge. NASA hit pause and asked industry for simpler, faster options. Meanwhile, China aims to launch Tianwen-3 in 2028 and bring Mars samples back around 2031. The race isn't a zero-sum game for science. Different sites answer different questions, but the optics are real. However the politics shake out, the science case is ironclad. Yezero's cores are too important to leave sealed forever. The rover's journey didn't stop for policy. In late 2024, Perseverance began the steep climb toward the Crater Rim, its fifth major science campaign, hauling itself up hundreds of meters to reach terrains that predate the lake. By early 2025, it had crossed the rim and logged more than 30 kilometers of driving. Each sol without a wheel failure, each dusty day with the MMRTG quietly feeding electrons to warm instruments and spin motors, is a little engineering miracle. The road ahead opens onto rocks shaped before the lake existed, foundations under the story we've been reading. And then Mars did something new again. It glowed. In March 2024, a powerful solar event washed the planet in charged particles, and for the first time, a camera on the surface caught a green aurora, the 557 nanometer heartbeat of excited oxygen. Perseverance captured it with Mastcam Z, while Supercam confirmed the spectral fingerprint. Maven, orbiting overhead, backed the detection. Later work even showed a second event and hinted at a way to forecast when Mars will light up again. These auroras aren't just pretty, they're space weather tools for future crews, and they mark the first visible aurora seen from the surface of another world. The rover also gifted us something only a machine with ears could deliver the soundscape of another planet.
We've heard the whisper of Martian wind, the crackle of dust devils hitting the rover, even the tiny pops of a laser vaporizing rock grains. Those sounds aren't just for wonder. In the turbulence and frequencies, scientists measure wind speeds and even the speed of sound in thin carbon dioxide air, data that folds back into weather models and engineering decisions for parachutes, drones, and habitats. Drop a comment with the one perseverance moment you'd put in a time capsule. If you've lost the thread of all these instruments, here's the simple stack. Supercam reaches out from a distance, laser, camera, spectrometers, to sniff chemistry and pick targets. Pixel presses in close and paints elemental maps so detailed you can see chemistry flow along a vein or pool inside a grain. Sherlock shines deep ultraviolet light to light up organics and trace them where they live, pixel by pixel, at the scale where life would have left its scars. When those three data sets agree, the team decides whether a rock earns a ticket into a titanium tube. It's hard to overstate how surgical that choice is. There are only 38 tubes for rocks and soil, and each one is a future month of lab time on Earth. As of mid-2025, Perseverance had filled 30-plus tubes, including rock cores, regolith, an air sample, and witness tubes that record contamination, while leaving a 10-tube backup depot at Three Forks. Every new core added to that tally sharpens the scientific bet we're placing on Yazero. The path behind the rover reads like chapter titles, Crater Floor, where lava and water wrote over each other's work. Delta Front, where the story turned from Was There a Lake? to What Did the Lake Do? Upper Fan, where the channel's energy faded and fine sediments settled with secrets. Margin Unit, where an unconformity, the missing time between units, spoke loudly in radar echoes. Naretva Vallis and Bright Angel, where a light-toned anomaly in orbital data led to the Sapphire Canyon core, and a global debate carried on in polite caution. Then the Crater Rim campaign, up and out to older rocks that may frame Jezero's entire story. It's geology as narrative, and Perseverance is both author and reader. People sometimes ask, what if Mars sample return slips? or never happens? What if those cores stay sealed on Mars? The honest answer is that roverside science is still changing textbooks. RIMFAX mapped the subsurface like an ultrasound and found buried delta architecture. MADA logged devilish winds and dust storms that matter for hardware and human lungs. MOXIE turned thin air into oxygen at better than planned efficiency proof that a future ascent rocket or habitat life support can feed off the planet itself. Even without return samples, the blueprint for living and working on Mars is getting sharper. But the other honest answer is this. Nothing replaces Earth Labs. If we care about the life question, we have to bring the rocks home. There's also the human part of this machine story. Perseverance is careful but daring, methodical, but curious. It has had a pet rock stuck in a wheel, watched whirlwinds kick walls of dust across the plain, and spent lonely nights listening to a thin wind where the speed of sound is different than on Earth. Ingenuity's shadow once skittered across its deck. Somewhere behind the horizon, a string of silver tubes lies in a zigzag field that hasn't felt rain for billions of years, each one a promise that will be back. The rover's cameras keep sending us light from that place, asking us not just to learn it, but to choose what kind of explorers we want to be. So where does the journey go from here? Up on the rim, the rocks get older and the context gets wider. The team will keep hunting units that bracket Yezero's wet past, rocks that predate the lake, rocks reworked by water, and rocks altered by later fluids. Every abrasion patch, every spectral scan, is another stitch tightening the timeline. And when another aurora rolls over Yezero, you can bet a rover will be there, pointing a camera and a spectrometer at a sky that briefly glows green. Somewhere in those layers below and that glow above 
is the story of a world that was once wetter, warmer, and more hospitable than the Mars we see now. Perseverance is there to make that story testable. If you're learning something today, share this video with one friend who still thinks Mars is just red dust and rocks. One last thought about the Sapphire Canyon core before we close. The headlines are exciting, but the science is deliberately slow. Minerals like vivianite and greygeite can form without biology. Organics can be delivered by meteorites or cooked up in water rock reactions. What turned scientists' heads wasn't any single signal, but the way textures, chemistry, and organics line up in that specific rock, in that specific environment, with the redox gradients that life on Earth loves to exploit. Either Mars invented a geological way to mimic biology so well that it fools three instruments at once, or life left a subtle fingerprint that survived three and a half billion years in a river-fed delta. Both answers would be profound. Only a sample on a bench can decide which one is true. Perseverance can't feel triumph, but if robots could, it would feel it in tiny increments. Each safe drive, each perfect seal on a sample tube, each time the drill brings up a clean core and the caching system clicks shut. The rover's name was chosen by a seventh grader who wrote that humans will always face challenges, but we persevere. That's the energy out there, every soul, methodical courage. It's what took us from parachutes and retro rockets to auroras in the night sky. From a failed first core to a geologic case that might just might carry life's echo inside. If you want to be here when the next chapter drops, when the rover fills another tube or the sky glows again above your zero, you know what to do. Subscribe for evidence-driven space stories. Drop a like to push this mission up the algorithm and hit the bell so you don't miss the next Perseverance milestone.